Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk on anatomy of an end-to-end -end Unity animation pipeline. I uh, hope you guys have ha all have had good C graphs so far. Uh, so my name is Arvind Nilakantan. I am a product evangelist uh, for Unity. Uh, I specialize in film and animation. And that's my Unity email ID and my Twitter handle. Uh, so the assets that I'm going to be using today are from uh, from a couple of companies or studios in India, uh, I'm based off of India, uh, called Video Gyan and Centaur Digital. Uh, but I don't have time for slides, uh, as someone on the internet said. So I'm just directly going to get into demo uh, and start showing you how to make animated movies or shorts inside Unity. All right, so uh, this is the Unity editor. Um, and uh, so wh what I'm going to do is, uh, earlier on, um, we had a few, uh, a few of us got, in, got together and used these assets to make a, uh, a small 10 second clip just so that we could show it to you uh, on the pipeline of how to use Unity. So I'm just going to play it. So by the end of uh, an hour, uh, I'm just going to have this short 10 second clip made inside Unity. Uh, so this is the clip. So that's it. So uh, that's a so all the assets were from uh, the video gyan and Centaur Digital. So we just made this really small 10-second clip, uh, and I'm going to show you how to how we made it uh, inside Unity. So first things, uh, so we start off with the empty scene, and we wanted to first start uh, playing around with the ideas because this is a kind of a gag uh, kind of a, a short film. So we wanted to test to test the timing, test the gag, make sure that the timing is right, and so on. So we started off with the empty scene. Uh, I'm going to start using uh, Pro Builder, uh, which is a, uh, uh, a sculpting uh, shaping tool right, built, uh, which was acquired by Unity and is now is available for free in the package manager. So I'm going to create a new shape. I'm going to start with a, a plane. So we'll just have a ground going on. So I'm just going to have a plane and just make it you know, uh, 200 by 200. And I'm just going to build a plane. So now that this is our surface, this is where our characters are going to walk and have all of the sets and so on. Also, the only thing we began with at the beginning of this one was just two characters. We just knew we had two characters, and that's about it. So we got these characters. We had a girl character. That's, the, uh, that's, this, uh, that's this character. And then we had the boy character, which is this character. That is all we began with. Because uh, you cannot really see it well, so let me just change the directional light just a bit so you can see their faces. There you go. So now these are the two characters we started off with. Uh, we also wanted to, we also knew that, you know, uh, we wanted to have a, a path on which the girl character is going to walk. And we also wanted a bridge and a cake or a castle at the, at the end of this, uh, end of this, uh, uh, this sequence. So we quickly just built that out. So I'm just going to build a, uh, a cube. Uh, I'm just going to make that the path on which he's going to walk. Slightly there. Uh, and then let's make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm still I'm going to use that's too large. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to use uh, Pro Builder again. And I'm going to have uh, Pro Builder comes with a whole a lot of uh, default shapes that are very very useful, especially when you're just prototyping, you're just testing out ideas. You don't want to start modeling right away. You just want to like test out these ideas. So uh, I have an arch. Uh, so I'm just gonna say, hey, uh, I want a uh, kind of like a little bit of arch. Let's have a thickness over there, maybe a little bit of depth, uh, and then maybe make it a little more smoother. And that's our arch. So I'm going to have an arch. So that's our bridge. I'm going to place that over there. All right, so she walks up the bridge. And then we want her to head to a castle. Uh, so again, I don't want to start modeling my castle. So I'm just going to use a Pro Builder again. And this time, I'm going to be using uh, the poly shape tool. So what I'm going to do is I switch to a more orthographic view. I'm going to select a poly shape, and then I'm going to build a castle. Doesn't have to be awesome. That's my castle. 
Blam, castle down. Uh, so if I head back, uh, this is a uh, this is the castle that I built, but obviously it's in 2D. Uh, we wanted to have a more 3D-ish castle. So again, once again, using uh, Pro Builder, I'm just going to place it over here, and then I'm going to extrude the face. So I'm going to select the face of that castle, and then uh, extrude that face. So it kind of looks like a castle. There you go. So now I have this scene built. So I have a, a path. I have these two characters have a path. I want the characters to walk up the bridge or, uh, and then head to this castle. So I have something very, very, uh, something to start with. All right, so let's start, uh, let's start with the timing and getting those things right. So for the first, uh, to begin making the character, uh, characters kind of move across this bridge, uh, or this path, uh, I'm going to create a timeline. So I, I'm going to right click, create a uh, timeline. I'm going to call it, uh, you know, um, short zero one. All right. And in here, I'm going to, uh, or rather, I'm just going to call it uh, animation sequence. All right. I'm going to drag and drop this inside my. Um, inside my hierarchy. Uh, by the way, I'm just going to grab all of these objects I created using ProBuilder and, and ch make it a, a child of this plane so that they're all part of the environment. So I created an animation sequence as a timeline. I'm going to uh, select that, and I'm going to add an animation track. And I'm going to start animating that girl. So I'm going to drag and drop that girl character and say, like, yeah, that's what I'm going to start animating. So. To begin with, uh, let's. If I click on this uh, red record button right here, uh, my, whatever actions that I take inside Unity will be keyframed and recorded in runtime. So I'm going to start clicking on that record button. I'm going to click on the girl and on the position. I want that to be the starting position. So I'm going to right click and add key. That's one way of keying it. Another way is much more easier. So I want. So there are two ways in which you could you could have the timeline display your time. Uh, you could either be in seconds, or you can also have it in frames. I'm going to keep it in seconds uh, because I want to. I want to have the, the beats right. So about in uh, four four point three seconds, I want her to walk up to this bridge right here. So you can see that there's automatically. Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah. So there's automatic keyframing happening over there, and then about at about at a second later, she's probably going to uh, walk up that bridge. Right. So that's. All right, so now that we have that, so if I play that animation, so I'll stop recording. You'll see that three keyframes were created. So this is what happens. So she's walking up that path, woo, and then um, going up the bridge. So that's good. Now we want the evil kid to follow this this character, right? So let's get him uh, following that character too. So I'm going to go up to my top view so that I can kind of get that positioning right on that little kid. So I'm going to add. Another animation track, I want to animate this boy. And I'll start recording. So first keyframe, I want the boy to be kind of hidden over here. And as the girl character walks by, I want the character to be kind of go over here, over, uh, and then right over there. Then we'll move this kid over there, and then over here. Want the kid to kind of zigzag into that area, and then finally, when she gets up the bridge, you want that evil kid to to be under the bridge, just like that. So it's kind of like hiding behind the bridge. All right. So I'll stop that, and then if I play it back, you'll notice that there's something weird going on, which is zoom in. So you'll see the kid is kind of like zigzagging, not really stopping. Uh, it doesn't feel like the, the kid is hiding. It feels like he's just kind of skating around. So uh, in order to fix that, what you can do is, uh, let me just move this out so that you can see the scene a little better. So what I'm going to do is, on the boy character, if I click on this burger icon, uh, I can also edit the keyframes using the animation window. So I'm going to select the animation window. So now you can see that the animation window and the timeline are working together. So during this phase, I want to copy this keyframe, go to Control C, and then want to have the character wait for a little bit, like for about half a second over there. And while the kid is over here, 
we want the kid to wait. Control C, Control V, so it kind of waits over there. And similarly, I also want the kid to kind of wait over here. So you have the kid over there, and then Control C, Control V. You have the kid over there, and so on. So now, if I play it, kid is waiting, kind of hiding, waiting, hiding. So it kind of like feels like you get the like nice zipping feel, and kind of feels like the kid is up to something. All right, so uh, while the kid is here, we also want to add some props so that the kid seems to be like hiding behind some some places. So uh, so you could you could do you could you could use the the old way of or the uh, usual way that I've been doing, which is just create a cube and then use that as a placeholder, um, and then you know um, use that as the hiding place. Or another way you could also do is just grab objects that oops. Uh, just grab objects that are uh, that you that I just found on the asset store. So asset store from Unity, there's like a lot of free and paid assets. I just got a free asset uh, called Darth uh, from a person called Darth Artisan. Uh, so I, I just got like a palm tree. So I'm just going to place that palm tree over here so that when the kid is here, um, just going to have the kid hide over there. So these are all just my placeholder stuff. So while the kid is hiding here, I want another tree maybe. Uh, and then another tree right there, um, the stumble, fill tree. Uh, but these are all just placeholder. It doesn't matter what you're going to put in there, but it just gives you a, a good feel. Like now you're already beginning to see, like, okay, it's a tropical island probably, or some kind of island, I guess. Uh, so now this is what it looks like. So you have the kid hiding behind trees, trees, tree, and then plant goes in there. All right, so now we want to get to camera shots. So right now we have the animation kind of set, like we have the timing set, so let's get the camera right. So for that, I'm going to add a Cinemachine timeline track on, the, on, 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 uh, on my timeline. I'm going to grab that main camera, and it's going to say, do you want to create a Cinemachine brain uh, so that your main camera begins to uh, understand how Cinemachine works, I guess. Uh, so we'll have uh, main camera over there, and I'm going to create a new, uh, sorry, a new uh, camera, a new cinema scene shot. So for the first shot, uh, I want the, the camera to kind of follow the, the girl character kind of up till here. So I'm just going to uh, trim it up there. And I'm going to create a new camera. So I have a new camera here. Uh, actually, I don't want that camera. I'm going to create a, a dolly track. So I'm going to create on the cinema scene, I'm going to create a dolly, a dolly camera with track. And dolly camera with track is awesome uh, for dolly shots. Uh, so uh, we do want that camera. So let me just move that. So now it's a good time to look at the game view, because the game view is what is going to render whatever the camera is going to be seeing. So I'll just move my dolly track right up to here. And I'm going to add a couple of uh, tracks. So I'm just going to go one, two, one more addition. And for the first track, I'm just going to grab, I'm, I'm holding down on control so that it's, uh, it's kind of straight and snaps to my grid. Okay, so now you have, so that's my dolly track. It's not, uh, let's just make it a little more wider so you can see it. So that's my dolly track right there. Uh, it's also like underground, so let's move that up. Okay, and I want, the camera is currently looking at looking up straight, we want the camera to look at the character. So I'm going to select my camera, and on the camera, I'm going to say uh, I, I want the camera to always look at, uh, I don't know, uh, the, uh, the uh, where is that? Uh, maybe the, the, the eyes of that lady character. So I'm going to look at, and now it's always, so if you look at the, char if you look at the camera, it's always going to follow the 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 eyes or wherever the eyes of the uh, of the girl character is. Uh, of course, we also want that the dolly to be slightly to the front. So we'll just move that over here so we can see her slightly. But and we also want to start animating the the camera so that it moves along the dolly track. So I'm going to do the same technique as earlier. So I'm going to add an animation track. I'm going to start animating the camera. And on the camera, if you notice, uh, there is a, uh, there is a uh, 
option here called path position. Now, depending on the number of paths that you have inside your scene, uh, inside your dolly track, uh, this, if I change it from 0 to 1, then it's going to snap to the next dolly track, which is called number 1. So if you have like three dolly tracks, uh, or three paths, or three paths to path, path points to your dolly track, then you can just have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and, and so on in your, in your path position. So now we have only one. So I'm just going to go animate that, uh, that camera. And I'm going to say on at 0 seconds, I want the path position to be 0. And then at right about here, I want that path position to be 1. I'm going to stop recording. So now if I hit play, notice that the dolly track is just following the mother character just like that. Um, one thing I don't like about this scene is while the camera is moving, uh, there is I don't really see a lot of changes in perspective because the background is so bare. There is no sets and stuff like that in the background. So I'm just going to add something really, really quick. Uh, for that, I'm going to select this plane. And I'm going to uh, use Polybrush, which is another tool uh, available for, f for you for free, uh, provided to you by Unity. Uh, so I'm going to select the Polybrush window. And, and I'm, this Polybrush window lets me sculpt and add uh, elements to my, um, to my scene uh, in, a, in a very intuitive way. Like I, I can even pa start painting stuff on my scene. And now currently, the uh, amount of polygons on this, on this plane is super low. It's got uh, like only three slices. So I'm just going to increase the, um, going to go back to my Pro Builder window. And I'm going to subdivide this object so that there are more subdivisions on that object. So you can see that this is, it just takes a little bit of time. Uh, so you can, I'm subdividing this object into further pieces. I want. So as you add more and more subdivision, it just takes a little bit of time just for it to add those uh, grids. Uh, OK. Just a second. I think I have too many windows open. I have like two windows, two Unity instances, and two Maya instances open. La, 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 la. So how's it going? <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, I oh I know why. This is because I started subdividing all the objects, including the children. Ah, oh, god damn it! All right, uh, this is not good. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, so I'm going to do something that's very, very controversial uh, in, the, in the realms of uh, talks, live talks especially. So I'm just going to close this because I have, so one of the cool things is the timeline is an asset. Uh, so all the changes I made is not going to go away. Uh, so it's still going to stay. Uh, I'm just going to close this because this is going to take a lot of time. Uh, oops. Uh, Sorry about that. Let's just start from where we left off, so it's OK. And for people who have never opened Unity, that's what opening of Unity looks like. <laughs> uh, OK, so we just have to put those characters in really, really quickly. So, uh, so I have my timeline, so I'll just drag my timeline. So if I look at my. Oops, not that one. OK. Uh, OK. God damn. All right, so I'm just going to grab, like, really, really quickly. Um, just going to do something here. Where's my mm -hmm. character? So I'm just going to grab these two characters in here. I'm just going to delete. That and I'm going to uh, add a um, add the same. Where's my Pro Builder window? And I'm going to add a new shape. I'm going to add a plane. Uh, just a quick revision of what I did. So it's pretty cool. Uh, 200 by 200. Build a plane. All right. 
And now if I select the plane, uh, I can start subdividing it. So you can see that it's subdividing the plane into several subdivided objects. So you can see that it is becoming more and more subdivided, uh, unlike the last time where I added everything together. So uh, let me grab the models. Uh, so I'll add the girl character here, the boy character here. Um, OK, and my SIGGRAPH timelines. OK, I did not save it. Ah, damn it. Uh, uh, so <laughs> all right, no problem. Uh, very, very quickly. Uh, add another animation track. I'll animate the girl. Uh, so will she goes, I'll just make it a little more simpler right now so that we don't have to repeat what I just did. So the girl character, I'm just going to uh, add a keyframe. And she's gonna go up to five seconds. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go away, uh, do away with the bridge and so on. So over here, let's move the girl character up here. So that's pretty good. And then I want to stop recording that. And then on the boy character, let's do that really quickly, right here, right here, right here, and right here. All right. All right. So I'll just leave it at that, and then uh, so I'll all soups, and then I'm just going to add one shot, uh, which is a cinema machine track, and I'm going to add the same dolly track. So I'm going to. I'm. This is this one is like really really fast. Uh, I'm doing so you can kind of this gives you an idea of how super fast I can do these things. Uh, so yeah, it's a learning experience. Uh, all right, so I'm going to create a cinema machine track Oops. using that camera. Uh, we'll just have one track over there, and we'll have that dolly track up here. Look at have the VCam look at the girl's uh, eyes, for example. Look at the girl's eye, and then I'll move the dolly track, and then I just want to add another dolly track in here. So, uh, blam blam. Move up here. Move it up close. Then I'll select the first track and then track it over there. And then we'll quickly uh, add an animation track. I'll add that camera in here. I'll start recording. Uh, on the first one, I do want the path position to be 0. And then on the last one, I want the path position to be 1. Okay. So that's pretty much what I did, other than the, um, than the mess up that I just did. Sorry about that. So last thing I want to do is the polybrush one. So, um, so I'm going to select polybrush, tools, polybrush, polybrush window. And in here, I can start uh, sculpting my background. So I'm going to select an outer radius of, uh, so this is, a, this is a paint tool. So in here, you can see when I select the uh, plane, you can see that now my gizmo changes to more uh, painty kind of tool. So I'm going to select an outer radius of about, let's say, 5, and then um, 5. And then our strength, uh, which is the amount. So I'm going to start sculpting mountains in this scene, uh, just so you guys know. Uh, wow, damn, sweating like crazy. Uh, so uh, on the strength, uh, I'm going to make it like about 20. And in the radius, I'll just leave it as it is, maybe one. One. All right. Oops. I should not have closed that. So that's five, 20, and so on. So now this is my brush, and I can start painting mountains. So maybe make, uh, make the strength a little more higher, so maybe 40. So I can start painting mountains in here. So while I so I can look at the game view to see where I want my mountains to be. So maybe this gives me a light, nice perspective. Uh, I'll add some mountains in here too. Um, so while the camera is moving, you can see that this mountains actually give a nice perspective to my entire um, to entire to my entire uh, camera track or camera tracking. Uh, I can also smooth. The, and of course, these are all just like you know. Um, um, 
just placeholder art that I'm doing, so I'm not really concerned about how high resolution this looks or how good it looks. I just want to have a, an idea of what this looks like. All right, so now that I have that going on, um, uh, I can also, in fact, uh, paint uh, objects on top of it. Uh, so if I, if I select some prefabs that I want to start painting on top of my mountains, I could also start painting these trees. So I'm just like painting some trees and you know, and you can add whatever kind of uh, objects that you want. So now that you have that, it gives you a nice little idea of where your, your character or what your character, uh, your shot needs to look like. All right, so now we are almost done with the, uh, with this shot, I actually wanted to add another shot, but I'm just going to skip that for now. Uh, all right, so now that I have this, uh, I want to then bring this. The most important part is I have tested all of these out. I want to bring this into Maya, because you have tested these things, but only. Uh, but you want to start animating your characters. You want to, uh, you want to then start uh, uh, animating or uh, modeling your set. All of that needs to be done inside Maya. So how do you bring this? inside Maya, so that's the next part. For that, I'm going to add a, uh, add a recorder track. And recorder is also available for, for free inside the asset store uh, by provided to you by Unity again. So I'm going to add a recorder clip. And in the recorder clip, I'm going to first say I want to record the animation clip of the girl to begin with. So I'm going to drag and drop the girl objects in my recorder clip. And the animation is going to be saved inside. You can save it wherever you want. So it's going to be saved on inside my recordings folder. So I'm going to hit play. And it's going to quickly go through my timeline. And it's going to record the animation of that, of that girl. So if I go to my recordings, you'll notice that now there is an animation here called animation girl 001. Uh, I'll do the same thing with the boy. So I'm just going to drag the boy character in here and then play it. So the boy's animation is also selected or is, uh, is uh, recorded. So that's recording <coughs> right there. And then finally, you also want the most important thing is getting the camera into, into Maya too. Uh, so for that, I'm going to grab my main camera, record that. So I'm going to hit play. So it's going to grab the position and the uh, and whatever the information that that the camera gets along with it. So the camera uh, animation also gets recorded in here. Cool. So now I have three animations: the girl animation, boy animation, and the camera animation. So I'll drag the girl animation onto the girl. So now it's now her animation is kind of baked into the girl. Of course, you could change it anytime you want. That's not a problem. And then on the boy, I'm going to drag the boy animation on, on, the, on the boy. And then finally, uh, rather than, rather than uh, having the main camera have the animation baked into it, uh, I'm just going to create a new camera and have the camera's animation baked in there. Because the cam we keep, most of the time when you're iterating, you're, the camera is the one that you're changing a lot. So now that I have these three things in, uh, I'm going to right click on the boy. And there is an option here called Export to FBX. Now, if that option shows up if you have the FBX exporter uh, in, uh, installed in your, or uh, FBX expo uh, exporter installed in your uh, project. Uh, it's, again, a free plugin from Unity. So I'm going to export it to an FBX file. And you can store it wherever you want. But in the, here, I want to store the model and the animation of the, of the character. So I'm going to click Export. Uh, I already had it earlier, so I'm just going to overwrite it. Uh, and it'll just take a little bit of time. OK, so the boy's animation is exported. So if I go to my models, export it, you can see that the boy is now an expo is exported as a, cat, as a mesh and as an animation. I'm going to do the same thing the girl. Um, so I'm going to export the girl character, all right because I already had it. All right, and then finally also want the camera to be exported. So I'm going to export it. And over here, it's important that you also have the camera um, uh, models and animation set up, export, all right. OK. Uh, 
Oops, I think I did something wrong. Uh, sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier. So in the recorder clip, when you're recording the camera, you want the, ca you want the camera to be selected in addition to transform itself. Uh, so I'm going to select everything so that you have the, uh, the camera and the transform uh, exported as an FBX file. So let me just do that again. Sorry about that. Uh, hit play. OK, so it's going to record the camera. Good. Uh, so let's grab this camera. Da, 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 da. Where is my recording? I'll just grab this camera, because now it's a different shot. I'll just drag it on this camera. All right, so uh, let's, uh, one second. Let me just go in here. Uh, I had both of these animations set in. So I'm just going to delete that from the animator, because now it's going to have both those animations. I only want the first animation to be in there. So I'm going to record, export this as, a, as an FBX file again. Um, all right, and now the camera gets its thing too. All right, now let's get into Maya. Uh, so I'm going to start importing all of my animations that I just exported out of Unity. Uh, so I'm just going to go here. Where is uh, actually easier way to do that would be right here. Uh, where is my recording uh, models exported? So I'm going to right click show in Explorer, copy that path, go to Maya. And then I'm going to import those models. So I'm going to import the boy, import that. It's fine. So now this is the boy character. And if I select, uh, if I go to outliner here, and then I am going to import the uh, import the girl character. Uh, oh, I crap! I did the damn. I'm like terrible at this now. Uh, so I mix miss something up. Uh, in the recorder clip, I should have selected everything uh, from the transformer. That should work. Okay. Okay. Outliner. And this gets selected, and then you also finally have the import of the camera. Uh, where is my camera? Oh, sorry. I selected the wrong ones. That's why. Just going to delete that. All right, so I'm going to import, import, uh, import the boy. It's going to take a bit. So if I look at the outliner and if I select the boy, you can now see uh, where is my boy. And all of the uh, keyframes that I'd done inside Unity is now baked inside Maya, just like that. Uh, I'm going to import the girl character. So just reading that just a bit. All right, so now you have the girl character and the boy character all, uh, all animated inside Unity. And then finally, you also want to import the camera. So camera got imported. So if I go to panels, perspective camera, uh, the camera, where is the camera? So you, ha you now have, uh, where is my import camera? Yeah. And earlier, I also had the, um, had the plane imported earlier uh, from an earlier scene. Uh, so you can see that that plane also got uh, imported inside Unity, oops, right here. So now you have everything that you have from the camera to the to the to the animation that you did and to the um, to the to the characters that you animated. Uh, and then uh, in here, this was the and then now my animator was able to use those keyframes and use those timings to then animate this one inside Unity inside Maya. So get the camera in. So he had the camera in, and then he was just able to animate this, this sequence right inside, uh, right inside Maya. So finally, uh, this was the scene that we had. Uh, so using the importing, uh, so, LM, so this was then exported oops, as an alembic uh, inside. So if you go to cache, 
Alembic cache and then export uh, to Alembic, you're able to export all of the animations from Maya into Unity as an Alembic file. And it was then bought inside Unity as an Alembic file. Now, to import Alembics inside Unity, you need to have the Alembic uh, importer, uh, which is another free plugin available for you on GitHub. Uh, so now, this was the shot I had earlier. So now we have uh, the boy character, girl character, and everything imported inside the scene view, uh, including the camera uh, as, an Alembic, uh, as an Alembic file. I mean, the camera was bought in as an FBX, of course. All right, so now we have this. Uh, I just want to switch gears really quickly and then show you what the exterior scene looked like. So I'm going to drag and drop this exterior scene. Uh, there is no light, so I'm just going to create a light, a directional light, right click, a directional light. And this was the, uh, this was the, the set that was created inside, uh, inside Maya and then brought into Unity as an FBX file because there is no, there's no animation involved in here. So first things first, and notice that there is, uh, so we want to start adding some stuff to the, to the scene itself because it looks, uh, there is no light, there's not a lot of lighting and it looks pretty bare. Uh, inside the new high definition render pipeline, which lets you, uh, which lets you have some really, really nice graphics inside Unity. Uh, so this is the workflow that you, that you need to have in order to have a very good looking scene. So first, uh, I'm going to just going to move the directional light and have the shadows show up in a better manner. I'm going to make this my uh, active scene. All right, so I'm going to select my directional light. And I'm going to have the shadows right here. I think that look a little better. OK, and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to create an empty game object. This is called volume settings. This is the settings that you want to have for your scene. Uh, this is a new workflow with the HDRP pipeline. So with volume settings, I'm going to add a component called volume. Uh, I'm going to set the volume as a global setting so that all of the settings, like my sky settings and my, um, uh, and my fog settings and all of that is like a global setting throughout the scene. I'm going to create a new volume. And I'm going to add overrides. So first things, I want to add a visual environment. Uh, I'm going to uh, select all. Uh, I do want a sky type, so I want to have a procedural sky. So when, as soon as I select this procedural sky, you'll notice that, that a sky box got created because earlier there was no sky box. And for the fog type, I'm going to create an exponential fog right here. So you can see um, fog got created. In order to start uh, having controls over this procedural sky and the exponential fog, uh, I want to add those controls or overrides. So I'm going to create a procedural sky override. I'm going to enable everything. And I'm going to, I want the sky to be a little greenish. So as soon as I select that, I want a greenish sky. And you can see that the sky is now reflecting on my ground. So as I change the color of the sky, everything in my, all the colors in my, in my, uh, in my scene also changes. So I'm going to make it a little greenish. Um, ground, I'll just leave it at that. And I also want to add an override to my exponential fog right there. Select all. And uh, this one lets you figure out like how much fog you want inside your scene. So I'm going to, you can play around with those values. Uh, actually, I'm kind of happy with whatever is right here. And then, uh, and then you also, so one of the cool things is uh, this, the scene itself was an additive scene in top of my animation. So this, my animation scene was in a separate scene. And my uh, exterior shot, which is the set itself, was in a different scene which means I was able to have my, uh, my animators work in, in, uh, in parallel to the set builders themselves. So now, in my game view, you can see that this is what my scene looks like. So you can see the character is walking. So I have an opening shot, and then the character is walking by. And these were all the animations that I ma made earlier and bought into Unity as an Alembic while the set builders were busy building out, uh, building out the scene. All right. A few things about this scene, there is a reflective lake in here. Uh, it's really not reflecting anything. So uh, to start adding reflections, uh, you want to have, uh, have reflection probes. So I'm going to drag and drop some reflection probes in here. So there are three reflection probes I have. First one is a catch-all. So it's like a huge reflection, reflection probe that catches everything inside your scene. So when I bake. So uh, reflection probes can be baked or can be in real time. I'm going to bake it because there's not a lot of moving stuff in here. 
So when I bake it, it'll just take a second. You can notice that now there are reflections in my lake. Uh, I also have a reflection probe that's going to reflect whatever is under the bridge because the, the catch-all reflection probe was not catching the reflections that were made by the bridge. So I'm going to select bake on that too. And so you can now see that, the, that this is now uh, reflecting whatever is under the bridge. One of the cool things about this reflection probe also, it's something that, was, that is new with the high definition render pipeline, is you can also select a blend distance. So you can have like multiple reflection probes, and then and when they are when rather than having a very hard boundaries to those reflection, you could select what is the blending that happens in these reflection probes. All right, that's cool. And finally, I also have a uh, reflection probe for this ice candy. So this ice candy material is a uh, so Unity HDRP has a whole bunch of material properties that are earlier unavail unavailable, like this, this real-time reflection and refractions. And then you also have like this kind of subsurface scattering on this, on this material. So now you have subsurface scattering. So you can have like foliate, skin, and uh, real-looking human characters and so on. So now you have that. So on this, there is no reflection. So I created another reflection probe around it uh, so that that gets reflected too. Uh, so when I hit bake, just a bit. So you can see that now this is also reflecting all of the environmental uh, and the, all the um, assets in that environment. All right. Uh, and then the last thing I also want to do is this scene looks a little bit bland. So let's add some post-processing effect on top of this scene so that it looks pretty good. So, um, so I'm going to uh, right click create an empty game object. I'm going to call this post-processing. And I'm going to add a component called post-processing layer. Oops, not layer. Uh, post-processing volume. Uh, I'm going to set that as a global volume, uh, sim very, very similar to the volume settings I had earlier. And then I'm, I can start adding post-processing effects to it. Now, one of the things that you have to notice, or uh, take care, is the main camera has a post-processing layer on it. And the post-processing layer is only going to apply on the post-processing layer layer. So I'll, I'll tell you what that means. Uh, so if I select the post-processing, that has to be in the layer called post-processing. Of course, you can name it whatever you want, but I just call it post-processing. I can add an effect. I can, there are a whole bunch of effects in there. So I'll just add some color grading to begin with. Uh, and I'll select high definition as the mode. I want the, the tone mapping mode to be on ACES, which is the Academy Color Encoding Scheme standard. Uh, and then I'll start playing around with maybe some, uh, this looks a little dark. So maybe I'll just in increase the exposure a bit, just like that. Uh, so that looks slightly better. Uh, OK, and then I can maybe add some uh, bloom effects so that things look a little bloomy. Select all. So that's too much bloom. Uh, I also want to highlight the green of, this, uh, of the sky. So on my hue versus, satur hue versus saturation, I'm just going to create some keys. So I'm going to click on override. So the greens in my scene are a little more, a little highlighted. So I can do that too. All right. So now I have bloom, and then I can add a whole bunch of other effects. Uh, so I have. So this looks. So where's my game? So this looks okayish, but it's a lot of like it's it's really like tinkering with these tools to ensure that your scene looks pretty good. Uh, so earlier on, uh, I'm just going to unload this scene. Remove the scene. Uh, I don't want to save the scene. Uh, earlier on, I had created a scene where I really, really worked on it uh, to ensure that everything looks pretty. So this was the scene I created. Exactly the same things that I had made, but with the color grading and the, and the bloom effects that I added, I just worked on it a little, little more, uh, a little bit better. So this is the scene. So we we are almost there. So we have everything set up and you know everything looking okay. Uh, one more thing which I did earlier was uh, the, uh, the, the baking of the global illumination itself, or the lights itself. Uh, those have, th that take a little bit of time. It takes about like uh, anywhere from 
five minutes to like uh, half an hour, depending on the complexity of the scene. So I had done that earlier. So uh, if to look at that, if I um, if you go to lighting, uh, sorry, uh, uh, window rendering lighting settings, I have real time global illumination turned on, and I also have the indirect resolution. Uh, to be a little low, so I have like one pixels per unit, and if I go uh, to my scene view, and if I go to albedo, you'll notice that these are all the color, uh, these are all the real-time uh, global illumination that were already baked into the scene for all the objects that were set as static. Uh, so that's why you won't notice the, uh, uh, notice the bridge and the other, uh, other uh, sets inside the scene show up, because those were not marked as static. For objects that need global illumination and, and are not static, I also added a light probe. So this was a light probe that I created so that uh, GI is, or is, is calculated for dynamic objects also. All right, so that's all I did. And uh, so, so now that we have a little bit of stuff going on, the other things that I also did was added per shot lighting. So rather than, so you don't want to have the same kind of light for every shot. You do want to keep changing those uh, lights up. So I added some lights, which are in my timeline. I added some rim and, and fill lights and so on. So now if I, actually you can see it better if I turn it off. So this is a, a slightly dark scene, a, a dark area, because you, you, you want to see some highlights on this girl character and so on. So if I unmute those lights in my, um, in my timeline, which I just added using uh, a, 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 a timeline plugin called Cine Lights, it's also free. And I'll show you all of the stuff that I used at the end of my slide. So you can now see that there are some fill lights and, and rim lights that are on this character, making the character a little more highlighted. Uh, also, I, I, I also added some reflection probes that are, uh, that are also per shot. So in these shots, you want the reflection to show up uh, a little more. Uh, you want the reflection probes to uh, show up those reflections from the bridge only at, at this shot. Whereas at the opening sequence, you don't really care about those reflection probes, right? So I just turned it on and off using the activation track and then having reflection probes set over there. And then finally, I also had added some soundtracks. So soundtracks were added using the audio uh, track. And so here I dragged and dropped a couple of audio clips. So if I play that, uh, can you play the audio, please? Yeah. So this couple of audio tracks that I just added into the scene, uh, they're completely two different audio tracks um, that I just edited using the timeline. And, and so we have that, and then finally, you want to then uh, record this, whatever you have done, using a recorder. So I added a recorder clip. Uh, same thing as I added last time. Uh, rather than using animation clips, this time I'm going to select video. And in video, you could have either a movie or image sequence. And if you select an image sequence, uh, you could, uh, your resolution can be up to an 8K resolution. And the source has to be your, uh, is, has to be your uh, cameras, oh, sorry. Your collection method has to be your cameras. Uh, and then uh, da -da -da, output format can be on a PNG, JPEG, or an EXR format. So you can have a whole sequence of uh, images that were rendered right out of Unity. If you do want to do some post-processing outside of Unity, either using Nuke or After Effects, you could always use an EXR format so that you get all this metadata baked into it. Uh, and then, so this was the final output that, we, that, that was made. Uh, the play. So this was recorded as a 4K video, uh, and yeah, that's and that was the process that we used uh, to make this entire uh, entire sequence. So that's about it. Uh, apologies for the that mess up uh, early on about the about the subdivision of objects, but you know it happens. Uh, so thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this were the assets that I used. So I used ProBuilder, PolyBrush, Recorder, default playables, uh, Alembic importer, uh, free trees by the, those were the trees that I used for just placing in the uh, in the in the uh, in the scene. 
Uh, I use the FBX exporter to do, uh, do the exporting and importing of FBX uh, from, my, uh, from Unity to Maya and Maya to Unity. And then I used uh, CineLite by Lauren, uh, who is a, um, who is a uh, artist inside Unity, and he has created this, uh, these tools that are very, very useful. I also use the Light Pro placement by the same guy, and I also use the, use the HDRP uh, scriptable render pipeline uh, to make things look very, very pretty and get those materials in that also look pretty good. Uh, so, uh, oops. Uh, the, so, what? So that's my, uh, that's my name uh, and my email address and my Twitter handle. So if you are, I'm open to questions. I have like another 11 minutes before I'm kicked out of this room. Uh, so you can, uh, you can ask me any questions that you have. Yeah. So, yes. Is available as a tutorial? So I have, uh, I can actually send you the slides. Uh, you can just email me. I can just send you the slides. And I have um, like step-by-step -step procedure telling you exactly what you need to do with this. So. It's pretty good, yeah. Yep. yep. For the block animation that you did at the beginning, uh -huh. what is the advantage of doing that in Unity if you are going to move it to Maya later versus just starting in Maya? So one of the things that people usually do is they actually have the entire set made in, made in Unity already so that you can get the lighting right, the timing right, the like almost 80% of your movie without the animation is already done inside Unity. Uh, so you know the, the mood of the scene and, and everything else right right there, uh, and you can just bring it into Maya to just do the animation itself. So that's the that's the big advantage. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. Well, if you're exporting it as an FBX, then you can. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. When you it kind of felt repetitive when you were doing the process of like hitting the play and then uh, uh, recording or exporting uh, yeah. from Unity to yeah. Maya. So for each and so right now you are dealing with just three assets. Well, that seems uh, okay, but what happens? Do you no, have a in, batch exporter stuff? Uh, in if you select animation clip, just a bit. Uh, so you can I I did it just to show stuff, but here you can add objects to your add multiple objects to the recorder, and you could just. Select whole ba batch export everything from yeah. one place. Yeah, yeah, I was asking for the batch yep. exports. Yep. They go to multiple files. Yeah. Yep. Hi, this is uh, my first time actually looking at Unity. So I have a question in terms of um, the visualization that you see there. That uh -huh. was that was done in in Maya, correct? The uh, animation alone was not, done. Not in the Maya. animation. The, the the visualization. The the scene was that done in Maya? The visualization. Sorry, the, the scene, the the lollipop. Oh, the yeah, the uh, you mean the the exterior set? Yeah, yeah, that was done in Maya. Okay. Yeah. Can you do that in within Unity to that to that level? Uh, you so you can use Pro Builder, but it's not. It doesn't give you, give you this kind of like a high quality yeah, sorry, that yeah. you that you do that you get. Maya does it best. Okay. And most Thank people you. are used to that. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll still be around in SIGGRAPH, uh, but if you have any uh, more questions, feel free to email me. Uh, and thank you so much for, uh, for being here. Yeah.